Okay, we just covered how to use Unity's UI system and scene management API to switch between different videos that are loaded as different scenes. So now let's take that concept and apply it to VR interaction. With 360 videos, you're most likely going to want to deploy them to a VR headset. It's just the best way to view 360 video. Um, it's a lot more exciting than viewing it in a 360 player in the web browser. Right now, I have my main menu gaze scene open, and this scene, like all the other scenes I've been using, is included as a sample scene in the Interactive 360 sample project. So it's available for you to use and reference whenever you like. Um, I'm just gonna go through the scene and we'll see what's here. So most of this is very similar to the last scene we were using, which is the main menu editor scene. Of course, the biggest difference is that um, we're using VR. So one thing that we wanna do is we wanna go and enable VR. So uh, I can just toggle here. I've already done it under the VR menu. Just make sure that the enable VR box is checked. And what that does is that just goes into my player settings and sets my um, XR settings to be using virtual reality. So I can get there by going file, oops, file, build settings, player settings, and then down here under XR settings, I have VR, virtual reality supported. And both of these SDKs, Oculus and OpenVR are in here. I'm currently using the OpenVR SDK because I have an HTC Vive at home um, where I'm recording this but uh, I also have an Oculus and I could use my Oculus here as well. And with the gaze-based scene, you could actually use that for any headset because there's no specific controller that it's using. Uh, if you wanted to build to Android, say Google Daydream or um, uh, Samsung Gear VR, just make sure you switch your build platform to Android there. All right, so we have VR enabled, so that's good. Now let's see, I have a directional light, that hasn't changed. I have my event system, that's also the same as last time. Now my main camera is a little bit different and that's because I have some UI on top of the camera that's gonna help me interact with the scene. Because this is a gaze-based interaction scene, I'm not using any controllers. Uh, not even like a keyboard or mouse. I, you know, I would just quite literally be putting a VR headset on and interacting with the scene by looking at objects. So we need a way for our camera or our gaze to interact with objects in the scene. So on the camera, I have a VR eye raycaster script attached to it. And what this does is it shoots a raycast out from the camera and detects if that raycast has collided with any, with any VR interactive items. Um, so right now we're not interacting with anything, but if we were, this current interactable uh, parameter right here would label which item we're interacting with. Um, and we have a ray length and a ray duration right here. All right. And then we have a reticle that we're using. I'll open that up. So if I open up my main camera gaze, you can see under here I have a VR camera UI parent object under it, and that's going to be a world space UI type. Under that, we have a, a reticle. And it's just a circle and it's green. Okay, pretty straightforward. Under that, there's a highlighted reticle and that's actually not turned on. Um, and we'll get to that later with the hotspots. All right, so we know that we want our VR iRaycaster to be rendering that small dot wherever the camera is looking. I'm just gonna hit play so we can see that in action. 
All right, and Steam VR is starting up. Okay, so if you look closely, you can see the little green dot where I'm looking. It's, it's hard to see on the screen, but it's actually quite obvious in the headset. And you don't want the dot to be uh, super big or dark anyway, because that would distract from the, from the experience. All right, so that's it for the camera. And let's go down to the video manager now. Just gonna minimize Steam. Oh, apparently my headset's not tracking. That's because I have it in my lap. There we go. So our video manager is uh, exactly the same. It's, it's pretty much gonna be the same for any scenario. Um, we have the scenes that we wanna load from this base scene. And we have some similar UI settings. We're gonna be using a fade, fade overlay. We can take a look at that fade out image here. It's rendering to the camera screen space. So um, in my VR headset, we will see that black fading in and out in between scenes. And we can see that in action right here. This will just fade in as soon as I hit play. There we go. That was pretty quick, but you could see it. All right, so another thing that's different about this scene compared to the last is the menu manager. So the topmost um, parent object that has the main menu manager script on it is going to be the same. We have an array of buttons in the scene. Um, in our case, we have these three buttons, house, waterfront, Mont Royal. Uh, we have a menu object. We have a play button. We have a pause button. All of that's contained within the main menu. One thing that is different is we're not able to click directly on our button because we're using a VR headset. Um, so we have to override that click event with a gaze event. And a really common way to do this in VR is with a selection slider. So I'll show you what that looks like. I'm gonna hit play here. Just have to wait for it to start up. Yeah, so I have, as my gaze goes over, my object here, the slider, will start. Um, this is, like I said, a, a pretty common method for doing gaze-based menu interactions. It's not the only one. It's just the one that we chose to include as a sample. So if you exit the, the slider before it finishes, then it'll just restart. All right. So under our main menu, gaze, object, if we go down to video selector, open that up, we can see our three options here. Each option has its text. Each option is still a button. One thing that we do need is we need to make sure we have this VR interactive item script on all of our buttons. And we need a box collider. We have our text, and then we have our selection slider. So the selection slider is the piece underneath that is filling up as your gaze is going over the box. So you don't want to actually make contact with the slider itself. You're making contact with the, with the UI component above it. And we define that here in the selection slider script uh, in the inspector here we are defining what the interactable is. So the interactable is option one. And then I have some audio that's gonna play on completion of filling the selection bar. That's a helpful cue for the audience. And I also have some audio that's gonna fill um, when you start to gaze over it as well. Okay. And that's, that's pretty much all we need to cover to understand how that's working. 
Of course, if you're curious, you can open up the selection slider script and um, read through it in detail. I'm just not going to cover the details of how the script is working right now. All right, that looks good. So again, we can see that in action. We'll hit play. As my dot, it's going over the object, the slider is filling up. And I'm also able to pause and play the video from here. Um, I don't have a selection slider for pause and play. That just seemed a little bit unnecessary. So instead, you just have to hold your gaze over the button for a couple seconds. And that's defined in a script on top of the pause and play UI. So if I go to main menu manager and open up main menu gaze here, go down to my play pause menu. On both play and pause, there's this VR button gaze script. I'm just going to open that up. And basically, what I'm calling is uh, this wait and click method. So once the uh, once we're, our gaze is actually over the UI, which would be the play or the pause button, uh, we're going to call this coroutine wait and click. And we're going to wait a second. And if that second is over and we're still um, on that UI, then we're going to call the click event. Um, and, you know, that just avoids uh, me from just accidentally glancing at the player pause button without meaning to and pausing it. Um, a second is about the right amount of time for someone to really uh, make gaze with a UI component. So that's it for the gaze-based interaction. Um, as I mentioned before, this isn't the only way to do gaze-based interaction. I'm sure many developers have come up with more creative ways than I have. Um, and if you have any other recommendations for using gaze-based UI, we'd love to hear them.